Okay, no more. Okay, this is 2x minus tiny x. Specifically, investigate in the interval between minus pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Don't include this endpoint, no. Parenthesis. Okay, then, then, then. Uh, okay, domain is obvious it's the same interval. Range, no idea, always I am totally lost. However, I believe that from negative infinity to positive infinity. Yes, because I very well know the shape of the tiny, tiny take any but and also it's a linear of the combination both together no it's a ratio just in case I verify when I finish now let's go to the wireless set wireless set p0 it's obvious to zero zero tiny zero zero and zero s zero s zero, S0, S0, zero comma zero as so always happen that we have wireless set coincident with the excellent set but I suppose that we have more. Uh, P of x is equal to x minus tangent x equals 0. This equation is a non-linear equation. Non-linear equation. Impossible. So it by hand. The only possibility we have is using uh, the graphical plate or Desmos. As I did in Desmos, okay, and the answer is, of course, x0, okay, the repetition this, but x is equal plus and minus uh, 1.166, uh, six, seven. So actually it's one six repeated, no? Mm -hmm. Okay, the point is zero zero again. Repetition is both and. 1.16 repeated comma zero and negative 1.16 repeated comma zero. It's an odd function. It's obvious it's odd function because of the combination. Look, it's an odd function. It's an odd function. How do you know? Because it's linear degree one. It's odd function. And tangent is also all function, and the combination is all function. You can prove that or not, not necessarily. And you replace x for negative x, so let's do it, let's do it. P and negative x make a reflection, is 2 times minus x, minus tangent, minus x. Okay, it was a now, this is minus 2x, and negative tangent is by itself odd function and this negative goes outside like a positive double negative tiny x and when you compare this new expression after the transformation is completely opposite side of this as a conclusion odd function okay so now and this is very called asymptote yes I suppose that we have two <coughs> and x equal pi over 2 and x equal minus pi over 2. But in order to investigate what is the behavior of this very asymptote, well, you apply the limit. Limit when the x approaches to pi over 2 positive to the left. And to the right now, to the right we have no function. Or the function is 2x minus tiny x oh it's obvious that this is plugging in here pi over 2 a pi minus tiny number tiny direct numbers for pi over 2 is infinity it's minus infinity this is infinity it's minus infinity and uh -huh, likewise limited when the x approaches to negative pi over 2 or 2x minus tiny x is negative pi uh, plus plus tangent uh, pi over 2 no okay one more time you put it in negative pi the negative spot for which you go outside and this is infinity positive 
conclusions. Therefore, my conclusion is so far. Okay, this is the old real number line that represents the x-axis. We have a zero zero. We have the x and the z, y and the z. We have two more here in this point, and we have in pi over two in negative pi over two asymptote. Uh -huh. And the curve, I don't know, it's supposed to look like that. Something like that. Well, from totally continuous move. Uh, sorry, my sketch. Okay, and then we finish the one on all. What about horizontal acid? Of course, do not exist. The horizontal acid do not exist. However, it have no sense to talk about because the interval is bounded. You have n points. So no, no n behavior. Good, very good. Okay, the calculus bar. Find the first derivative. Case 2. Minus secant squared. X. You are forced to be zero in order to find the critical value. Now, you said this equation is then here. Secant squared x equal to apply the square root both sides. Secant x and secant plus or minus radical two. If you don't remember very well. The secant, you remember the cosine, you flip that, cosine x is equal to a sum minus 1 over radical 2. Rationalization is plus or minus radical 2 over 2. Oh, I remember now, x is pi over 4 in the first quadrant, and x is equal minus pi over 4 in the second quadrant. And this is critical part. Potential maximum. I need to verify in the number line. Huh? Okay, this is my number line. Here. Okay, we have zero in the middle. We have maybe here pi over 4 positive and negative pi over 4. And we investigate if these critical values are minimal or maximum. Remember, my domain is standing a little bit pi over 2 positive and pi over 2 negative. I will do it. It's a domain. Because I pick, I pick, for example, one guy here, one guy here gets zero, good, and one guy here. Okay, I pick, I pick, of course, maybe pi over 3, pi over 3, 60 degree, negative pi over 3, negative 60 degree. And you evaluate this. Point, they put a record in the first derivative expression that one. P prime, they were let in zero and one because two minus secant zero is one, square one, two minus one is one. P prime evaluates in pi over three one, this is a little bit more complicated. This is the calculator. The answer is negative 2. And P prime evaluated minus pi over 3 is positive 2. No, minus 2 again. Let's just say. This is in decreasing function. This is also decreasing function. And this is increasing function. Oh, I just I discover that this is local minimum and this is local max. It's a proof.
and this happens when you evaluate the original function p dot p prime and pi over 4 okay, is is approximately in decimal 0 0.57 and p evaluated minus pi over 4 is approximately minus 0 0.57 uh -huh. so we have two we have the minimum at the point this is the minimum no this is the max and this is the minimum that's all better we say at the point pi over 4 positive comma 0 0.57 is the max local max or relative max either way and negative pi over 4 comma minus 0 0.57 is the mean Okay, end of story. Now inflection point. Okay, inflection point, you need to find the second derivative. The second derivative, you take this expression, second derivative of x, let me try, uh, derivative to a zero, and derivative secant is uh, minus, 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 minus two, uh-huh, and the real the secant square, no idea, but let's apply chain rule, no? Let's secant x power 1, power root first, and the real the secant is secant time. So we have double secant, no? We say double secant, secant time. Then, actually, the secondary of the expression is minus 2 secant square x, Tangent x. Okay, you force it to be equal to zero. The secant never is zero. The tangent is zero. So the e negative two is of course not zero. Tangent x equals zero. This happens at x equals zero. Is the potential inflection point? I need to investigate. Okay, inflection point potential. I apply the second derivative test. This is zero. Uh huh. Now, 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 you take the expression of the second derivative and evaluate one hypothetical point, maybe pi over 3. It's inside the integral. Negative and positive. When you evaluate in pi over 3, the answer is negative. A is radical 3. Mm -hmm. Put it plug in here. And when you evaluate the second derivative, in minus pi over 3 is a radical 3. Conclusion this is concave up, this is concave down, and zero is inflection point. Perfect. Now let's see this move. Okay, ready. Uh, well, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, this is a curve. I saw clear the asymptote, pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. I saw clear also the maximum and minimum, uh -huh. and pi over 4 and negative pi over 4 points. Okay, okay, so now you take the expression for the first derivative, and it's positive here. Okay, blue color, I, the convection of blue color is increasing and red color a degrees. Oh yeah, cool. Okay, this is the picture. I have the picture for the second derivative. I copy this. The expression for the second derivative. When the second derivative is negative, it's concave down. No, concave down, yellow. And when it's positive, concave up, green. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 